Warriors and Sons. <clears throat> this one was spicy, Shams. But I want to ask you, did Golden State let this one slip away? I really think that the Suns took it because the Warriors, they had, they were right there. They had, I thought, decent control of the game throughout into the third quarter. And then you saw Clay Thompson kind of lose it. He gets ejected. And then the Warriors started to really fall apart. But to me, it was really the story of Devin Booker so far this season. His usage rate is actually as, as the lowest it's been in the last three seasons, but he's playing much more efficiently. Uh, so far to start this year, averaging over 30 points a game, very efficient three-point and field goal percentage. Chris Paul, on the other hand, he's averaging the lowest usage rate throughout for, for his entire NBA career. So he's only at 15%. So to me, that's a sign that they're starting to get other players involved. Devin Booker, Miles Bridges, DeAndre Ayton, you're starting to see kind of the, the, the turn of the Suns right now going more youthful than relying on Chris Paul this season. Chandler? <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I think we're going to see a lot of this, obviously, from the Warriors. They're Steve Kerr smart, and they're okay with losing games now to get their young guys like Moody, like Wiseman, Kaminga, that experience when they know they're going to be in the playoffs. They know they're going to be playing in these big games. They're sparing these games now where they're obviously hoping still to win, but they're getting these guys live game experience that you can't teach in practice. You can't teach in shoot around. So I think the Warriors, they're frustrated. Um, but they're okay with this. I think this is the type of loss that's going to pay off in the long run with getting these guys the exposure early on. Um, and I think that's what they're doing. I think they're throwing them in the fire early. Uh, Clay, obviously, he was frustrated. Was he frustrated because he was over five from three and one for eight for the field, <laughs> or or that they were? Who yeah. knows? But I think I don't. I think it's just one game early on that the young guys are getting good experience in. Obviously, they want to win, but um, I think they'll be okay. Obviously, in the long run. Yeah, I yeah, think that. look, the, Reggie Miller said it over and over last night. These are these are there's just gonna be these games. They mean more to the opponents. These are the big bad warriors, these are the reigning champs. And we're on national TV. We got to prove a point. We talked about it yesterday. It's a big game for the Suns. They have to show up, they have to prove that they still have that in them. And they did. And it's not an excuse for the Warriors, but it kind of is just the way it is. We all show up to work on the wrong Thursday and just like want to go back to sleep, right? <laughs> um that's not to say the Warriors weren't trying. They weren't giving it a go. Steve Kerr put the starters back in in the fourth quarter, down, I think, 16. They made a little run of it. But, yeah, there was a little bit more energy on the Sun side. And going back to Devin Booker, it's it's good to see him be the player that – he's one of those players that Coopers love him. And fans kind of wondered what he could be for years because they were losing so many games. So it's dope to see him thrive in these moments. And he was ready for it. And, you know, he let Clay have a piece of his mind too. Yeah, he did. And speaking of Clay, it's it's shocking to me that was his first ejection ever. Man, he was fired up. Did, Chandler, when you saw this, what was going through your mind as far as why he's so frustrated? Because I I don't remember seeing him this angry. So what's the deal? No, I'm, um, yeah, me neither. I think obviously this is his his own game last night wasn't there. Like I said, he was one for eight from the field. He was zero for five from three. He wasn't playing well. It's hard for me to imagine that if he was hot and he was knocking down shots, he would have reacted like this. Um, but something like this is something like this is interesting with all the drama surrounding them, uh, the Draymond pool situation, Clay getting ejected, and these young guys. You know, the Warriors have kind of. They've extended them. All these guys are getting paid. Wiggins, Poole, and those are kind of, it's almost like it seems like the end of this era is coming and there's this new wave of young guys and maybe that's kind of leaking into them and maybe that's uh, a situation there. But I honestly just think Clay had an off night, was pissed off and, and was just barking about his rings. <laughs> I mean, I mean, to, to really take a look back, you saw Steve Kerr said post game that the minutes restriction is actually something that's frustrating Clay Thompson. And I know <laughs> from speaking to people around the Warriors that that's something that he's dealing with. That's something that Draymond Green has has dealt with so far this year. These guys don't really want to be on minutes restriction, especially Clay Thompson starting the year. But they both miss so much time, so much valuable time in training camp that they have to be. So I'm I'm curious, Chandler, from your perspective, if you're a guy like Clay Thompson, accomplished. <laughs> to be on a minutes restriction in big games like this, that must be a little tough. 
it, it's it's honestly it's unbearable it's it's you finally you get these five six minute stints and you know you're coming out so mentally you're doing things that you normally wouldn't be doing he's probably taking some shots knowing he's coming out it's hard to get in a rhythm when you just have these little segments and i went through it with my career where we started you know i started coming off the bench i started timing it where i could be in at the end of the game uh, you try and mix and match and find a rhythm, but it's very, very hard, especially for clay. He's never gone through something like this. So now he's trying to work himself back in. He's trying to get his condition. He's trying to get his legs all while playing within the flow of their offense and not, you know, doing anything crazy, knowing he's coming out. So it's tough. Obviously I think as the season goes on, they'll extend his minutes and he'll get back in that normal feel, but it definitely is tough and it takes a toll on you just knowing that even if he gets five, six, seven threes and goes on one of those clay heaters, he's coming out. Yeah, I think you know, look, Clay is an easygoing guy. Last night might have just been last night, but there is a lot going on with him. There's a lot to consider with his situation. Not only the minutes restriction, but his place on the team. Chandler mentioned it. They have Jordan Poole, who is basically the replacement in a lot of ways. They've drafted guards in the last few drafts. They're clearly looking forward to the future with or without clay. He only has one year in his contract left after this year and there's no player option. There's no team option. They both can cut ties. We don't know what the idea is with them. This is his first year with, with a full summer to fully recover, fully get in shape. He wants to show what he can do. The minutes restriction is frustrating. Nobody's denying that he's only averaging 11 points a game. He's not shooting that well. He started season slow before it's not something to be concerned about, but you have to imagine he's frustrated with everything that's going on with him and the team. And Charles Barkley spent and, a long time I, last night I, and I know, talking oh, about that. Sorry, sorry about that. No, I, I wanted to ask you because Charles Barkley spent a long time talking about how this is not the same clay. And I don't know if that's an age thing or just simply, you know, he was really vocal about not playing pickup games this off season. He's a little, I think, scarred mentally about the injury and he doesn't want to repeat that. So I don't know if Charles was being a little bit overly dramatic or it really is the beginning of the backside of Clay's career, which is really hard to say out loud for me, Chandler. Yeah, it's and listen, I know Clay very, very well. He's the most unselfish, best positive guy ever. But when you see now Andrew Wiggins is their second best player, he gets the extension. Jordan Poole gets the extension. Like Eddie just said, the future of Clay Thompson is 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 shortening. And that's stressful and that's tough. And obviously he's had a great career and you can't knock that. But the Clay Thompson we're used to seeing isn't really the same. And, and, and Draymond's kind of in that same category where I know they feel it. They don't want to talk about it. And they're literally going to eat and practicing with their replacements every single day. So they, they want to win. They want to win a championship there and they're going to do whatever they can, but that's a difficult situation to go to work with the guy that's taking your job basically next year. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready for any of this guys. Um, but on the other <laughs> side, look, we, we've talked about the warriors and rightfully so they are the defending champs, but the Suns, and, and it was just yesterday we were thinking, Oh, is their window over? Did they miss their shot last year? Then they come out with a pretty dominant win. Did we underestimate this Phoenix squad, Eddie? Um, I think a lot of the concerns are still true, but yeah, they won 65 games last year. They ran away with the one seed. Had they not had a COVID outbreak or whatever they're calling what happened in game seven, do they go deeper into the playoffs? Very likely. Um, they have all the makings of a contender. If they get something useful for Jay Crowder, even more so. They have a big who can stretch the floor a little bit, who can guard multiple positions. They've been in huge games. They have leaders. They have a great coach. They have all the makings of a contender. I still have my concerns about Chris Paul. He had a decent game yesterday. Killed my parlay. Sorry, Chandler. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, uh, underrate, write them off too early. I, I'm not so sure. I still think there's a gap between the Warriors, despite what happened yesterday, Celtics, the Bucks, teams like that, and then the Suns. All right, fair enough.